everything I do is, is based on one weird encounter I had my freshman year in college, right? I was playing in a punk band. And I was playing a gig at CB's, at CBGB's, this is a club in New York that's not there anymore. And uh, during the set break, um, this woman bummed a cigarette off me, right? Um, and, I, and I was, you know, talking to her and I asked her what she did. And uh, she said she did electronic music. She studied electronic music. And I was like, electronic music, what's that? So I learned all this stuff. Um, I started splicing tape. I started repairing all these old synthesizers, analog synthesizers. I taught myself computer programming. I taught myself electrical engineering. And it's uh, a bunch of art I've made over the years with data. Um, so there's three pieces. Uh, the first one is called Hindsight is Always 2020. And it's a piece I did for the 2008 Democratic National Convention. And what it is is it's a, it's a bunch of eye charts, like when you go to the doctor, eye, eye doctor. But instead of letters, they're words. Um, and so there's one for every president of the United States. And what it is, is it's, uh, it's the 66 words that they use in their State of the Union addresses more than any other president. So like if you look at George Washington's eye chart, right, his number one word is gentleman. George Bush is terror, right? Ronald Reagan is deficits. Richard Nixon is truly. Abraham Lincoln is emancipation. You get the idea. Um, so it's a way to get like an American history lesson by looking at the words presidents use. Right. Um, I've got another one, it's a little bit of a sequel, called A More Perfect Union, where um, I decided to try online dating. Right. In uh, 2008, I started on this one. Um, and what it is, is it's a, it's a critique of the U.S. Census. So what I did was I joined 21 online dating sites, different online dating sites. Um, is, a, is a straight man, a gay man, a straight woman, and a gay woman uh, in every zip code in America and downloaded everybody. So I got 19 million people, right, sorted by zip code. So I can tell you how many people in your, in your zip code are shy or how many people are looking for someone who's fun, right? And so what I did was I, uh, I made a huge road atlas of the United States where I replaced all the names of the cities with the word people use more in that city than anywhere else in the country, so um, in their dating profiles, right? So New York City, its number one word is now, right? Um, Washington, D.C. is interesting. Uh, Seattle is heartbreak. San Francisco is gay. Los Angeles is acting. You get the idea. And it's about, you know, what if we could make a census instead of about how much money we make or what kind of job we have? What, what if we could look at um, what, who we want to be with or who we, who we think we are, how we describe ourselves? What kind of information is there? How do we self-identify as Americans? Um, and then I have a third piece, maybe not quite as funny, um, that's a piece called Hard Data that's a musical um, it's a sonification, or it's a sound, there's a little bit of image too, but of the, uh, the casualty stream of the Iraq war. So the idea is you have a measure of music every day. And if 50 people get killed that day, you hear 50 notes. If nobody gets killed that day, it's silent. And you can listen to the soldiers and you can listen to the civilian men and civilian women and civilian children um, who died, you know, from during the arc of the conflict, right? And it's a way to... Uh, explore emotional impact of data. It's sort of a double meaning. Hard data is data like it's hard, like it's facts, numbers. But it's also hard like it hurts, right? The idea that data can hurt. I guess, you know, the best piece of advice anybody ever gave me uh, was um, my mentor. At uh, I went to Columbia University. My mentor at Columbia um, was a guy named Brad Garten who, uh, who told me that the best way to learn anything is, is, is to try to learn it yourself first and make all those mistakes, screw up, you know, and, and you should never wish for anything specific, right? You should, you should never have the goal so locked in that you know you need to have it. It's, it's, it's a artistically kind of flawed way of thinking, problematic way of thinking. And so now I, when I make films, I don't really have a thing I expect. And when I work with data, I don't really have a thing that I'm, I, I really, I really need um, anymore.